This is the brand new Savage Gear Sand Eel V2. We do a bunch of different sizes. We do six different colors. And these three sizes here, for me, these are the ones I would use most for my shore fishing. These are the J-hook version. We've got the 12 centimeter. We've got the 14 centimeter, which I'll tell you about in a minute. And then we've got the 15.5 centimeter. These three sizes I use mostly for my shore fishing. Way before the world ended, way before the pandemic, I went to Denmark for a meeting to discuss with Mads how we're going to bring out a new generation of Savage Gear sand eel. And we had all the sand eels laid out on a table. And look, it looked beautiful. All the old sand eels, all the old colors, all the sizes. And we're looking and we're talking and it's, hang on, we've got a size missing between that one, the 12 centimeter, and that one, the 15.5 centimeter, it became glaringly obvious we had a size missing. So that now is the 14 centimeter. And by, look, by luck or by judgment, I think we've hit upon a sweet spot. Because with this head, the body and the head together is a 33 gram total, and that is deliberate as well. So you know our nine to 35 gram rods, I wanted to make sure that 14 centimeter sand eel could be fished safely on those nine to 35 gram rods. Now that combined weight on that length body, it absolutely flies. If you need to put one of these sand eels out from the shore, as far as you can get it, you've got to have a look at that 14 centimeter, 33 gram one, it's a missile. That is the original Savage Gear sand eel. That is the sand eel V2. We've played around ever so slightly with a jig head, but we've still gone for that pointy, that kind of hard swimming design. We've made very subtle adjustments to the tail on the V2, which gives me a bit more of a thump, okay? I can really, look, both sand eels are lovely in the water, but I can definitely feel that little bit more kick on the V2. What we've also done is be very careful, mind you, because you know, these lures work. They've always been very popular. People love them. But we wanted to toughen the material of the body up a bit without losing any of the movement. That was a really hard thing to do. Because again, you could make a sort of, you could make a soft plastic or basically never break down. But that's not what we want for the Savage Gear Sand Eel. We want as much movement as possible but also to try and catch as many fish as you can on the one lure before that body breaks down. So this lure has got, I would argue the V2's got more movement, but the body is that little bit tougher and it's longer lasting. In those two plus one packs, the bodies of these Sandhill V2's, they come with rattles in them, okay? Taken out by all means, but this is how you put one in if you want to. See that rattle chain with that hole there? Just slots in, in you go. It doesn't affect the profile of the lure, doesn't affect the way it swims. But some anglers, including me in some situations, like a rattle in a lure. When you grab one of these kits, we call them a two plus one kit. Two bodies, one jig head. You're gonna find one lure pre-rigged, then you've got a spare body, then you've got these two toothpicks. Now, as with the weedless lures, there is no way we are suggesting that you need to clean your teeth. These toothpicks, they are such an ingenious part of rigging these lures. I'm going to show you how easy it is to rig one of these sand eel V2s. Let's imagine you've had 50,000 fish, you've trashed the first body that was pre-rigged. This is how we'd rig that second body, okay? There's a very 
visible an obvious hole there. I'm going to take the hook point through that hole and then I'm aiming for there. That is where that hook point's going to come out. All I'm doing is sliding it down the body. It wants to come out there. And then you see that spike there naturally goes into the body like that. Now, that's rigged, but it's not secured. And we're giving you those two options of how you want to secure the soft plastic body to the jig head. Look, your third option is don't secure it. That's entirely up to you. I will. The traditional method is to put a drop of super glue in there behind the back of the head, squeeze it up, hold it for a while, and like that. Now, I reckon 50 times I've done that and I've stuck my finger to the side of the lure because I've used too much glue. We are using what we call a pro peg mount system, which to you and me is a toothpick. You see that hole on the side of the lure? I'm going to put that toothpick through there, out the other side. Now, I'm not going to fish with a lure and a toothpick, but what I've done is I've used that little bump in that bottom wire on the jig head, and look at that. I literally, that is as secure as glue. That's how it comes in the packet. But what I'm going to do, obviously, is I'm going to trim one side, keep that for another lure, nudge it back through, trim it nice and tight. That is your sand eel V2, ready to go. No glue, no sticking your fingers to jig heads, no getting overexcited because the fish are on and sticking your fingers together, because yes, I've obviously done that. With that toothpick method, honestly, you can't fail. This is the 15.5 centimeter sand eel V2 with a total weight of 46 grams, okay? So we say 46 grams on the packet. That weight there, 31 grams, that is the weight of the jig head. So if you're gonna put this lure, which is pretty substantial, on certain lure rods, just be aware that is the weight of the jig head. It is not the total weight of the lure. The total weight of that lure is 46 grams. I accept that this is entirely up to you, but I do not bass fish with any barbs on singles or trebles. So when I take a lure out of a packet or I put a new hook on, I put a new weedless hook on a lure, the first thing I always do personally, I cross the barb flat. I can see no need for them. It's better for me, better for the fish. And I promise you, I will not lose fish using barbless hooks. You'll see here that I'm targeting, it's deeper water. Okay, it's not rough, but let's imagine it was 10 times rougher than this. I've got the SGS-8, the nine foot six, the 12 to 46 gram version, because I want a bit of grunt. It's incredibly adept, this rod but it does give me that bit more backbone when I'm, let's say I'm really punching into a strong wind. That tip is not collapsing at all. And I'll start off fishing the Sand Hill V2 with that lovely kind of sink and draw action. Up, feel that tail work, follow the lure down. Up, following down up, you're almost setting the lure. And when I'm fishing like this, you know, I've got an exposed J hook. I'm not trying to fish the bottom. And on that sink and draw, I would expect to get hit on the drop. So you draw the lure up as it sinks, 
That's when I expect to get hit. But then also, oh, it flies. Also, you know, I'm gonna fish it on a straight retrieve. You don't have to do all these fancy retrieves, twitch, pause, up, down, left, right, center, throw them around a hoop. You can whack a lure out, wind it in. You're doing nothing wrong. This lure works great. The Sand Eel V2 works fantastically on a straight retrieve, whack it out. Now I'm gonna retrieve it faster than I would the weedless version, because I'm trying to keep it up a little bit. I don't want him near the bottom, I don't want him snagging up. But this works great, like a, just a, what I call a, a whack and retrieve lure. Oh, God, they cast well, Jesus.